In this video, we are going to go over a few things you will come across as the ICU nurse when using Tableau to deliver sled dialysis. First, we will go over how to select the machine that is ready for patient use. Then we will go over the mandatory paper documentation. We will also go over how and when to use the test strips. And lastly, we will review how to add medication such as calcium and potassium to the solutions. Let's get started. When choosing a machine, please make sure it has all the necessary items. You want to see this green sign that says ready to go. If you see a red sign or a purple sign, please select a different machine. You also want to make sure it has the bag with all the necessary test strips. The book must be accompanied with the machine and the number on the book should match the number on the machine and make sure that the tubing is attached. All of these items also need to be returned with the machine, including, especially including the book. Now let's go over the mandatory paper documentation that needs to be filled out during each sled session. You will find this paper in the book that is accompanied with the machine. First, we see the date. One thing to note is to please not skip any dates. For example, do not go from 8-1-24 to 8-3-24 leave room for 8224. So even if you don't write anything here, the dialysis nurses are responsible for checking the machines daily, so they may need that slot. So go 81, 82, 83. Next, you'll see the box not in use, which means that the machine is being checked that day by the dialysis nurse, but is not currently in patient use. Next, we have out of service, which obviously means that the machine is not in service. Not in service machines will be identified by the sign on the machine that says out of service. Next box consists of men care residual check. This means that the machine has undergone a chemical disinfection by the dialysis team, after which the residual water in the machine needs to be checked to see if there is still some remnant of the chemical cleansing agent which is dangerous for the patient. To check the residual, take a 10 cc syringe and remove 10 milliliters of fluid from the bottom port on the inside door. Place this test strip in the fluid and then check. The test strip should be completely white. If there is even the tiniest remnant of a bluish color, the machine will need to undergo a rinse. The machine will tell you if this test needs to be done and it will not let you continue on to patient care until it is finished and the result is negative. In the next box, you will see TX start time. TX meaning treatment start time. This is a very important and simple step. However, it is being reported that we are skipping this step. Please place the time that the treatment has started here. In the next box, you're going to write the patient's medical record number, and if they're receiving SLED, please write SLED under the medical record number. The next box goes over the hepatitis B status. Whenever you have a patient on SLED, we must make sure that the hepatitis B antigen is ordered. This test is a send out in our hospital and takes on average 24 hours minimum to come back. So if you do not see the hepatitis B at the start of the treatment, please mark this as unknown. This is very important because for each positive or unknown patient, a chemical disinfection must be completed by the dialysis team between the patients. Chlorine and chloramine check. This test is done every four hours to see how much chlorine is in the water. The first time this test is done is when setting up the machine, and every four hours the machine will prompt you to test again. For this test, you will take a new specimen cup for each patient and place 100 ml of water in the cup and move the test strip back and forth for 15 seconds. Remove the test strip and wait 20 seconds for the color to develop. While you're waiting, fold the white plastic handle of the test strip under the reagent area so that it provides a consistent viewing background. This test should show 0.01 or lower in order to be negative. Now the timing of the chlorine test is very important. Remember that when we are setting up the machine for the patient, it asks us to perform this test. So it is completed about 15 minutes before the treatment has started. Therefore, make sure that the time reflects that. For example, if we started the treatment at 7 a.m., like it says on this paper, our chlorine test was completed approximately at 6.45. If you come across a positive, the treatment must not be started or if you've already started the treatment and after four hours it becomes positive, the treatment must be stopped immediately and the blood cannot be returned. It must be discarded. If you ever do get a positive, 
Mark on the back of the paper the date, the time, and the actions that you took and the results, positive or negative, and return the machine to dialysis immediately. There have been patients that have died due to dialysis treatments where the chlorine was too high, so please pay close attention to this step. In the next box, we have to write the time the treatment ends, and in the next box, it says external surface disinfection performed. The machine needs to be disinfected between patients with the bleach wipes. Next, we have machine disinfection cleaning performed. The cleaning method that we will do in the ICU is heat. The dialysis nurses are the ones responsible for performing the other methods of cleaning. So if you perform the heat cleaning, please document that. To complete this form, we will place our initials here and here and sign the bottom. A few other things that we need to know how to do. During the setup, we will be asked to perform the pH test. Right after you check the chlorine, it is going to prompt you to check the pH, which is step eight in the setup process. The screen will say, take a dialysate sample. To perform this test, you will need to use the pH strips. You will remove 10 ml of fluid from the bottom port on the inside door and then drop some water on the strip and read it immediately. The fluid needs to be between 6.8 and 7.8. Lastly, in the rare event that the machine asks, you may have to perform a blood leak test. This is how you do it. With a new syringe, remove about 10 ml of water from the door at the top port and place the strip in the water. You will see a negative or positive. If you get a positive, this means that the blood is leaking from the machine into the water supply. The treatment must be stopped immediately and the blood cannot be returned. It must be discarded. To add calcium or potassium to the dialysate solution, you will take the packets provided for dialysis and then you will add the ordered amount. For example, if the doctor ordered 4K, but all we have on hand is 3K, we will need to add one milliequivalents per liter to the solution. So in this case, we will take two packets of 0.5 milliequivalents of potassium and add it to the solution and shake well. Then, using the provided label, we will write the new solution. Each packet tells you how many grams there are. Using the potassium example, there are 6.3 grams per packet, and we are using two packets, so we are adding a total of 12.6 grams. This changes the solution from 3 milliequivalents per liter to 4 milliequivalents per liter.